Heavenly Father, lieber himmlischer Vater, Lord, we thank you for another week of life. Herr, wir danken dir für eine weitere Woche des Lebens. And specifically for this time in this earth's history. Und insbesondere für diese Zeit in der Erdgeschichte. To the privilege, uh, for the privilege to be part of this little movement. Dass wir das Vorrecht haben, ein Teil dieser kleinen Bewegung zu sein. To be receiving of this great light you've given us from Dass above. Wir ähm, erhalten dieses große Licht, die du uns von oben gegeben hast. And Lord, I pray that we would uh, realize our necessity. Und ich bete, Herr, dass wir alle unsere ähm, Not erkennen. And seek you where you may be found. Und dass wir dich suchen, während du noch zu finden bist. Please impress upon us now your principles. Herr, bitte ähm, beeindrucke deine Prinzipien in unserem Verstand jetzt. That we might not be of those with an Evil heart of unbelief. Dass wir nichts unter diejenigen sind, die einen bösen Herzen der Unglaube haben. And we pray and ask all this in the name of Jesus. Und wir beten uh, und bitten all dies im Namen Jesu. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, turn in your Bibles to Joshua chapter 6. So, geht in unserem Bibel zu Joshua Kapitel 6. And um, in Joshua, th this is marking the point where God's people are right on the border and they're about to go in and take the land. Und dies markiert um, Gottes Volk, die stehen gerade an der Grenze und die gehen kurz davor, stehen kurz davor, das Land einzunehmen. Josua 6. And, and prophetically speaking, that's where we are. Und prophetisch gesehen, da stehen wir gerade jetzt. Okay, uh, so uh, Joshua 6, Vers 1 und 2. Joshua Kapitel 6, die Versen 1 und 2. It says, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. So, what is, these first two verses, what, what does the Lord say? So, diese ersten zwei Versen, was sagt der Herr? It's, it's a promise, right? Also, es ist eine Verheißung. It's already given, it's given. Yes, it's already given. It's a more sure word of prophecy. Right? It's so sure because the Lord says, I've given you them before they've even done it. Right? It's so sure that the Lord has said, I have it to you before before it's ever happened. Okay. Now, just to remind you, just go to Hebrews chapter 11 that we went through yesterday. Nur zur Erinnerung, geht zum Hebräer 11, wo wir gestern durchgegangen sind. Because we were shown that the book of Hebrews is the antitype. Right? Wir haben gezeigt, dass das Buch der Hebräer ist das Antitypus. And we understand that all the prophets are speaking about the end of the world. Und wir verstehen, dass alle Propheten sprechen über das Ende der Welt. Right? And at the end of the world, The Lord is going to demonstrate to the world that he has a people that understand his word. Und am Ende der Welt, der Herr wird zeigen, dass er ein Volk hat, die sein Wort versteht. And the people at the end of the world will be studying line upon line. They will be bringing all the stories of the Bible together. Und am Ende der Welt, sein Volk wird studieren Linie auf Linie. Die werden all die Geschichten der Bibel zusammenbringen. Okay. And that's the methodology that will get confirmed right here at this waymark, right? Und das ist gerade die Methodik, die hier an diese Wegmarke bestätigt wird. And that's what Paul is doing in Hebrews chapter 11. Right? Das ist was Paulus tut in Hebräer 11. And he let's look at verse 30. Also Hebräer 11 und Vers 30. It says by faith the walls of Jericho fell down. How did they fall down? Also wie sind die Mauern Jerichos gefallen? By faith in what, Nick? Durch Glaube in was? I asked you this question yesterday. In the sure promise. Yes, in the promises, right? In the Because 
They're sure, right? Weil sie sind sicher. Because God changes not, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. Weil Gott verändert sich nicht. Er ist dasselbe gestern, heute und für immer. And, and he can't lie, right? Und Gott kann nicht lügen. So, when the Lord says that he's going to come and deliver you when they do all these things, you've got nothing to worry about, right? Also, wenn der Herr sagt, dass er dich befreien wird, wenn die all diese Dinge tun, dann hast du nichts zu fürchten. What about the three Hebrews that were getting thrown in that fiery furnace? Was ist mit den drei Hebräern, die in den Feuerofen geworfen worden sind? Were they, were they worried? Hatten sie, hatten sie Angst? Hatten sie Furcht? Ja, es sagt, our God will deliver us. Die right? haben gesagt, egal, unser Herr wird uns befreien. How did they know that? Woher wussten sie das? Yes, they, they, okay, so they believed what, Nick? Also sie hatten was geglaubt? Let's go there, Isaiah 43. Lasst uns da hin, Jesaja 43. Vers 2. Isaiah 43, Vers 2. It says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia, Seba, for thee. Right? So, they, the, those three Hebrews, they believe this promise right here. Also diese drei Hebräer, die haben gerade diese Verheißung hier geglaubt. Because they understood the context of the time and understanding what the prophecies were pointing to. Ja, die haben der Zusammenhang verstanden, worauf diese Prophezeiungen gedeutet haben. So it wasn't it wasn't a presumptuous claim. Also right? es war nicht eine um, eine vermessene Behauptung. Would it be presumptuous for me to stand on that window ledge and jump say no that the angel said that they will bear me up? Also wäre es vermessen, wenn ich hier von Fenster springen würde und so und so neu ist es okay, die Engel haben gesagt, dass sie mich ähm, tragen werden? Yes, that would be presumptuous, das right? Werde wohl vermessen sein. Because it's not necessary to do that. Weil es ist nicht notwendig, dass ich das tun muss. But when you understand the time and place, what prophecy is appointed, those promises are sure, right? Wenn du verstehst, der Zeit und Ort, worauf diese Prophezeiungen deuten, dann sind diese Verheißungen sicher. And those three Hebrews understood exactly where they were in prophetic time and that that prophet promise was applicable to them. Und diese drei Hebräer, die wussten ganz genau, wo sie in der Zeit prophetischerweise gestanden haben und dass diese Verheißung war für sie. Okay, so back to Hebrews 11. Zurück zu Hebräer 11, Vers 30. Vers 30. It says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. How many days were they compassed? Wie viele Tage waren sie umzingelt? Seven days, Sieben right? Tage. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Right? So, Vers 31. Rahab here, she represents somebody who had faith and the, those that perished that had no faith. Also right? Rahab stellt jemanden da, der Glaube hat und die, die in, so in um, Jericho um, vergangen sind, jemand, uh, Menschen, die keinen Glauben haben. But, but it represents, this is an external part, right? Rahab is the, represent the Gentiles, right? Aber das ist eine externe Macht, also Rahab stellt die Heiden da. Okay, but... Um, The point I want to make here is this seven days. In relation to what we've been talking about, what's this seven days? So, diese sieben Tagen, ich möchte bitten, im Zusammenhang mit dem, was wir gesprochen haben in letzter Zeit, was sind diese sieben Tage? Okay, everything has to be done by context, right? But where have we been talking about seven days recently? Wo haben wir neulich über sieben Tage gesprochen? 
In Leviticus, in right? This book, from the Brit of Moses. And uh, specifically, if you just go to, go to Numbers chapter 12. Insbesondere, when we are to the 4th book of Moses, chapter 12. Sehen, Vers 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, If a father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that let her be received in again. So, the, we, we looked at this, right, and the spitting in the face is the cross experience, right? So we have das angeschaut, dieses im Gesicht anspucken, das ist das Kreuzverfahren. Right? So, um, we know that, we, we were, were talking about right here, that this marks this, uh, this experience where you're, you're shut out of the camp, right? You're this, this leper. So, wir wissen, dass hier, dieses ist das Erfahrung, wo du aus dem Lager ausgeschlossen bist, du bist diese Leprakrank. And at the end of the seven days, who was to come to that leper? On am Ende dieser sieben Tagen, wer soll zu dieser Leprakranker kommen? The priest, the right? priest. And this is signifying Christ coming to his people now to heal their leprosy, right? Das deutet auf Christus, der jetzt zu seinem Volk kommt, um sie von diesem Aussatz zu heilen. Where did Christ come to, to heal their leprosy? Wo ist Christus ähm, gekommen, um diese Leprakrankheit zu reinigen? At, at the baptism, right? By the Taufe. Okay. So, I, I'm suggesting that this seven days, which we've been putting in here, this seven days, uh, uh, represents this time period, right? Also, ich schlage vor, dass die sieben Tagen hier von Jericho hier drin sind, wo wir diesen anderen sieben Tagen hier haben. Just before we, we confirm that, right? It Aber says, noch, bevor wir das bestätigen, um, Go to Ezekiel 13. Get some Ezekiel 13. And then we will come that up, right? Ezekiel 13. Now, Ezekiel 13. In the, the story of Jericho, what is it that gets brought down? Also in der Geschichte von Jericho, was ist es, was runterkommt? Uh, uh, the wall, right? Die Mauer. The walls of Jericho. Die Mauern Jerichos. Okay, so in Ezekiel 13, it's now speaking about internal. This is an internal message. So Ezekiel 13, das ist jetzt eine interne Botschaft. It's speaking about these false prophets. Spricht über diese falschen Propheten. In, in verse 9. In verse 9. It says, And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies, they shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord God. So, what's the promise here to these people? So, what is the Verheißung here for these here? They shall not they shall not enter into the land, right? Nicht in das land einkommen werden. So, there's a promise to God's people about entering into the land, and this is marked by this story of Jericho, right? So, es gibt eine Verheißung für Gottes Volk, die in das Land einziehen, und das ist markiert durch Jericho, right? And the, here, it's an internal thing, uh, a prophecy against uh, a people who are proclaiming falsely that they will not enter into the land, right? Und hier ist eine Prophezeiung für diejenigen, die falsch prophezeien, dass sie nicht in das Lande einkehren werden. Okay, let's read verse 10. So, Vers 10. Because, even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace, and one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Say unto them which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstone, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you, Where is the daubin wherewith ye daubed it? 
Therefore thus saith the Lord God, I, even I, will rend it with a stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger, and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. So I will break down the wall that ye have daubed with untempered mortar, and bring it down to the ground, so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered, and it shall fall, and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall, and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar, and will say unto you, The wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. That's verse 46. So who's going to do this work? So where wird dieses Werk um, tun? Who's going to bring down this wall here? Wer wird dieses Mauer niederbringen? The, the Lord's going to do it, right? Herr. And it says when he does this, that ye will know that I am the Lord. Right? Und er sagt, wenn ich das tue, dann werdet ihr wissen, dass ich der Herr bin. Okay, so he's going to bring down their wall and he's going to punish those false prophets. Right? So the external is just an illustration of the internal. Right? So this wall of Jericho that's been brought down is a prediction. Right? Right? So, where's the prediction given? So, wo wird der Vorhersage gegeben? Where, where, where do we mark here the prediction? Right here at the beginning. Right? So, wo markieren wir die Vorhersage, die gegeben wird? Hier am Anfang. So, the Lord is predicting that the wall of Jericho is going to fall and also internally that this wall that they have set up is also going to fall, right? So the Herr sagt hervor, dass der Mauer von Jericho fallen wird und auch diese Mauer intern, die sie gebaut haben, wird fallen. So it's a punishment externally and it's a punishment internally. Right? Es ist eine Bestrafung extern und eine Bestrafung intern. Right? Amen. And the prediction externally is marked in the book of Hebrews, line upon line. Und right? die Vorhersage extern, did you say externally? Extern. Der Vorhersage extern ist markiert in das Buch Hebräer Linie auf Linie. Okay, that he's going to bring down this wall. Dass er right? diesen Mauer niederbringen wird. Okay, um, so let's go now, go back to Joshua chapter 6. So lasst uns zurück zu Joshua, Kapitel 6. Gehen. Vers 3. Vers 3. Now just remember that this right here is a fractal of the seven thunders, right? Und denk dran, dass das hier ist eine Fraktal von den sieben Donnern. Yeah, yeah. Guys, there's too much... Uh, uh. There's too much going on in here. We need to pay attention to this. We miss these points. Right. I'm just saying, remember that this is a fractal of the seven thunders, right? Denke daran, dass das hier eine Fraktal ist, der sieben Donner. So, in the seven thunders, you have two times of trouble, right? Und in der sieben Donnern gibt es zwei Zeiten der Trübsal. And although we haven't got a mark on here, there would be a little time of peace here, right? Und obwohl wir es hier nicht markiert haben auf der Tafel, es werde denn im Prinzip eine kleine Zeit des Friedens hier geben. Because the pattern is always the same, repeating. Right? Right? Der Muster ist immer dasselbe, es wiederholt sich nur. So, we know that the second time of trouble is always greater than the first. Right? Und wir wissen, dass das zweite Zeit des Trübsals ist immer stärker als das erste. And this is the point that I've been making, that, that right here, at this way mark, is where God's people will get delivered up. Right? Das ist der Punkt, den ich betont habe in den letzten Tagen, dass gerade hier an diesem Weg mache, ist der Punkt, wo Gottes Volk ausgeliefert wird. And you will have this final great trial before entering into the land. Right? Und dann wird es diese finale große Versuchung oder Prüfung geben, noch bevor wir in das Land einkehren können. So, uh, Joshua chapter 6 and verse 3. Joshua Kapitel 6, Vers 3. It says, And ye shall compass the city all ye men of war, and go round about the city once, 
shall thou do six days. And the seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day he shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets, and it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horns, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Who is it that brings down that wall of Jericho? So where is this, what this Mauer of Jericho niederbringt? The Lord, right? This is the Herr. And Sister White says very clearly, the Lord does it, that no man gets any glory for this act. Und right? Ellen White sagt klar heraus, dass der Herr das tut, so dass kein Mensch die Ehre für diesen Tat für sich nehmen kann. So, it's talking here about seven days, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And in the seventh day, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. Spricht hier über sieben Tagen und in der siebten Tag diese sieben. Okay. So, I want to suggest that this, this seventh day when they go around seven times is the seven times that Christ gets tried. Also ich möchte vorschlagen, dass am siebten Tag, wenn sie siebenmal um Jericho herumgehen, dass das ähm, den sieben Mal ist, wo Christus verhört wird. Because if we take this fractal, right? There's the cross, and that's the time you have tried seven times. So wenn wir diesen Fraktal nehmen, hier das Kreuz ist, und das wäre dann der Zeit, wo du verhört wirst, oder sieben right. Mal. It's just always the same pattern at different levels going go, go this way. Immer wieder derselbe Muster, nur an verschiedenen Ebenen. Okay. And it's at the end of this seven times that the the wall falls down. Es ist am Ende von diesen sieben Mal hier, wo der Mauer runterkommt. Okay, so, I, I mean, I'm still open to understanding these things, but I'm just use, showing the repeating patterns, right? Also, ich bin noch offen, um diese Dinge völliger zu verstehen, aber gemäß der Muster, der sich wiederholt. Right, so, what is the sign that they're looking for right here, what we just read? So, was wir gerade gelesen haben, was ist der Zeichen, wonach sie Ausschau haben? It's in Vers 5. In Vers 5. Okay, but they're blasting with the horns every day, Margaret. Also, sie stößen in den Posaunen jeden Tag. It's very specific. I mean, it's not difficult. You just to read it. It's very specific what it says. It's very specific when one is lost. No. Verse 5. It's in verse 5. It says, It shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horns, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. Right? So the sign is, not just the horn blowing, but when you hear a long blast, also right. der Zeichen ist nicht nur, wenn du den Posaune erschallen hörst, sondern wenn es ein langes Erschall von sich gibt. Right, very specific, right? Sehr besonders. Okay, so, go to Exodus chapter 19. Also, zweite Buch Mose 19. Because the Bible always explains itself, right? Und der Bibel erklärt sich selbst. Zweite Buch Mose 19. So, Would we agree that the six days that they're walking around Jericho is a time of preparation? Right? So, werden wir alle zustimmen, dass die sechs Tagen, wo sie um Jericho herumgehen, dass das eine Zeit der Vorbereitung sei? What? Exercising faith. Yes, they're exercising faith, right? Also, sie üben Glauben. They're following the strict instructions given by God, right? Sie folgen diese gerade Anweisungen, die Gott sie gegeben hat. Because the, the Lord gave them very, very specific instructions how to set themselves out, what to do. They would probably think of saying, why are we doing this, right? Also der Herr hat sie genaue Anweisungen gegeben, was sie zu tun haben, sogar wie sie sich, in welcher Reihenfolge ähm, 
aufstellen sollten und sie haben sich wahrscheinlich gedacht, warum tun wir das? So if you were to bring stories together, what would they be doing? What would be another story? What would you parallel that? Also wenn wir die Geschichten zusammenbringen werden, welche andere Geschichte werden wir nutzen, um das parallel zu stellen? Sinai? No, they're doing something, just think about it, they're doing something that the Sister Weiss, she has a quote where she says, that to the natural man it appears absolutely ludicrous what they're doing, right? So Ellen White had a Zitat where she said, for the natural man, that is total Wahnsinn, that is Torheit, what she da macht. So just think of another story where somebody was doing something that was ludicrous to the, the, the natural carnal mind. Noah, right? Denk an etwas andere, eine andere Geschichte, was totaler Schwachsinn ist zu dem natürlichen Verstand. Noah was building an ark according to the pattern given him by the Lord, right? Also Noah, der erbaute eine Arche gemäß den Muster, die Gott ihm gegeben hat, right? So, to the natural man, these thoughts even that we're doing here are just crazy. People think, what, what are you talking about? Right? Also für den natürlichen Mensch, selbst das, was wir hier in der Klasse tun, ist es... Das ist Unsinn. Also so die werden sagen, worüber, worüber labert ihr überhaupt? But the Lord says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My, or, or my, my, my uh, thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Right? Also der Herr sagt, meine Gedanken sind höher als euer Gedanken. Meine Wege sind nicht euer Wege. And when you bring these stories together line upon line, the preparation for them is to exercise faith in the instructions that God has given them, regardless of what they might think naturally, right? Wenn man diese Geschichten Linie auf Linie zusammenbringt, der Werk, die sie hier tun sollte, ist, dass sie Glaube üben, gemäß den Anweisungen, die Gott gegeben hat, ähm, egal, was anderen darüber denken werden. Right, Exodus 19 and verse 9. So, zweite Buch Mose 19, Vers 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. What is that? So, was is das jetzt? Diesen ersten Vers. No, 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 no. Just verse 10. What has the Lord just said and what is it? So, was hat der Herr gerade gesagt und was ist es? Okay, he says he's going to do something, therefore, what is it? Also, er sagt, er wird was tun, also, was ist es? It's a promise. It's a promise. It's a promise. The Lord says he's going to do something. He's going to do it regardless of what happens, right? Der Herr sagt, wenn der Herr sagt, dass er was tun wird, er wird es tun, ähm, trotz was alles passieren wird. Okay. So the Lord said to Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. So the Lord's going to do this for what reason? Also der Herr wird das tun, aus welchem, aus welchem Grund? That the people would believe Moses forever. Dass die Menschen Mose für immer glauben würden. Right? Amen. Look. Go to Deuteronomy 18. Geht zum vierten Buch, Mose 18. Who was Moses a type of? So, wer hat Moses vorausgeschattet? Right. Right, the type of Christ, right? Yes, Typos für Christen. Vers 18. So, vierte Buch Mose 18, Vers 18. It says, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So where does the Lord raise up a prophet and put his words in their mouth. So, wo stellt der Herr ein Prophet auf und tut seine Wörter in ihren Mund? Where, where Margaret? At the exceeding bright light, right? Der äußerst helles Licht. Because the exceeding bright light is the confirmation of the prophecy, right? Der äußerst helles Licht ist der Bestätigung der Prophetie. Jeremiah, he put his words in his mouth, right? Jeremia, der Herr hat seine Worte in seinen Mund gelegt. When he came out the belly. Als right? er aus dem Bauch herauskam. Okay. Isaiah, holy, 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 he touched his lips, right? Isaiah, heilig, 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 und dann hat er seine Lippen berührt. He was, was given, the, given him the Holy Spirit so he could speak. 
Er hat ihm den Heiligen Geist gegeben, so dass er sprechen konnte. So, right here, when the Lord comes down on Mount Sinai, it's so that they will believe Moses forever. Right? Gerade hier, wo der Herr auf Berg Sinai herabkommt, ist es so, dass sie Mose für immer glauben werden. Right? So, what is the Lord giving them? So, was gibt der Herr sie? Evidence. So, Beweise. That Moses is the man that the Lord wants to use, right, to give God's people the truth. Right? Es ist die Beweise, dass Mose gerade der Mann ist, die der Herr benutzen möchte, um Gottes Volk die Wahrheit zu geben. So at the end of the world, what does the Lord need to do to prove that he has a people? So am Ende der Welt, was muss der Herr tun, um zu beweisen, dass er ein Volk hat? Prophecy or promise. He must give them evidence, right? Er muss sie Beweise geben. He predicts something, he brings it to pass, then they know that God has a people, right? Er sagt was vor, er bringt es zustande, und dann wissen sie, dass Gott ein Volk hat. But before that can come to pass, the Lord has to give you a work to do, right? Aber noch bevor das zustande kommen kann, der Herr muss dir eine Arbeit geben, die du tun musst. And what is the work that we have to do now? Und was ist das Werk, die wir in dieser Zeit tun müssen? Build the temple, right? Das Tempel erbauen. And how are we building the temple? Und wie erbauen wir den Tempel? What is this light doing? Was tut dieses Licht hier? Just think of yesterday, what we were talking about. Denkt über gestern, worüber wir gesprochen haben. What is the light? Was ist das Licht? It's the oil. Es ist das Öl. That you must receive, right? Das du äh, erhalten musst. That you must ask for. Uh, wonach du bitten musst. And when you receive it, what's it doing? Und wenn du es erhältst, was tut es? It's sanctifying es you, right? Reinigt dich. Es heiligt dich. So the work we have to do right here is cleanse the soul temple of every defilement. So das right? Werk, die wir in dieser Zeit tun müssen, ist der Seelentempel von jeder Verunreinigung reinigen. By faith. Durch Glauben. In the promises that are to come, right? Durch Glaube in die Verheißungen, die kommen werden. By receiving all those stories line upon line, it's removing all the false concepts from our mind. Right? Denn, dass wir alle Bibelgeschichten Linie auf Linie erhalten, das entfernt alle falsche Konzepten von unserem Verstand. So in Exodus 19, he's given them a promise that he's going to come down, right? So in 2. Buch Mose 19, er gibt da eine Verheißung, dass er herabkommen wird. But then he gives them a work to do to prepare for that. Aber right? dann gibt er sie ein Werk zu tun in Vorbereitung darauf, dass er herabkommt. Let's see what that work is. Lasst uns sehen, was diesen Werk ist. Verse 10. Where are you, Mark? Back in Exodus? Yes, that's okay. what we're talking about. Where are you in Exodus? Go back to Exodus 19. Also 2. Buch Mose 19. And verse 10. And verse 10. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and do what? So, was soll ich tun? Sanctify them. Heilige sie. Today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. Right? That's it. So they had three, or they had a couple of days of preparation leading up to the third day where they must be ready. Right? Also sie haben ein paar Tage der Vorbereitung gehabt, der führt zum dritten Tag, wo sie vorbereitet werden sollen. Amen? Amen. Okay. So, and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. So there is a promise, but it's also a prophecy. Right. Hier ist eine Verheißung, aber es ist auch eine Prophetie. And if, if they don't do that work of cleansing themselves, they, they are got an evil heart of unbelief. Und wenn right? sie diese vorbereitende Werk äh, der Reinigung nicht tun, dann haben sie einen bösen Herzen der Unglaube. Right? Amen. Because they don't really believe that the Lord is going to come down. Weil sie glauben nicht wirklich, dass der Herr herabkommen wird. Go to verse 15. Vers 15. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount. And the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. So what did they hear? Was haben sie gehört? On the third day. Am dritten Tag. 
So they had a trumpet that was exceeding loud. Also die haben eine Posaune gehört, die äußerst laut war. No, no, let's read on. Lass uns weiterlesen, Vers 17. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in how? In fire. Der Herr ist herabgekommen in Feuer. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded what? Long. And waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. So what, what did the... What did they hear here on the third day? So was haben sie hier gehört am dritten Tag? No, no, but, but what just, I'm just asking you. They, they had a trumpet that was loud and getting, it was long, right? It was a long trumpet blast. Also right? sie haben eine Posaune gehört, der sehr laut war und es war lang. Es war ein langes Erscheinen. Now, I just remind us, because yesterday, when we were in, Uh, Hebrews chapter 12 just let's go back there go, go to Hebrews 12 also zur Erinnerung gestern als wir in Hebräer 12 waren und da gehen wir jetzt in Hebräer 12 Vers 25 Vers 25. It says, See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that speak on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. So the Lord spoke to Moses from heaven, right? And he told him, Go wash yourselves and be ready the third day. So right? Er sprach zu Mose vom Himmel her und er hat gesagt, geht und wascht euch und seid bereit an den dritten Tag. And it says, verse 26, Vers 26 sagt, Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Right? So, when we go to this fractal, so when we have this fractal, where's the shaking of the earth? Wo ist der Erschütterung der Erde? At the beginning, right? Anfang. So the shaking of the earth, followed by the shaking of the heavens and the earth, right? Erschütterung der Erde und darauf gefolgt der Erschütterung der Himmel und Erde. And I spend much time showing that the shaking of the heavens and the earth is when that prophecy gets fulfilled, right? viele Zeit verbracht, um zu zeigen, dass die Erschütterung der Himmel und der Erde ist gerade da, wo diese Prophezeiung in Erfüllung geht. So, if you, if you take it down, it says, the, the voice that comes at the beginning shakes the earth, but then it says, I'm not going to shake the earth also, but also the heaven. Right? Wenn das herunterbringt, der Stimme, der erschüttert der Erde, sagt, aber er sagt, ich werde nicht nur der Erde erschüttern, sondern auch der Himmel und Erde. Now, just go to Psalm 68, and you'll see this. Gehen wir zum Psalm 68. Because Psalm 68 is talking about Mount Sinai. Denn right? Psalm 68 spricht über Sinai. Vers 8. Vers 8. Psalm 68, Vers 8. It says, The earth shook, The heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. So when the Lord came down on the third day, what was its marking prophetically? So, der Herr am dritten Tag herabkam, was hat das markiert prophetisch gesehen? The shaking of the heavens and the earth. Die Schüttelung right? der Himmel und der Erde. In Vers 9. Vers 9. Thou, O God, did send a plentiful rain whereby thou didst confirm thine inheritance when it was weary so when he brings this prophecy to pass what does he send so when er diese prophezeiung zustande bringt was sendet er plentiful rain plentiful rain also eine genugsame <coughs> rain now according to prophecy what is the shaking of the heavens so gemäß prophecy 
Prophetie, was ist der Erschütterung der Himmel? What does it mean? Was bedeutet es? Speaking about the sun, the moon and the stars. Right? Spricht über der Sonne, Mond und Stern. But the sun, the moon and the stars, the physical things, they're pointed to something literal, right? Aber die physische Sonne, Mond und Sterne, die weisen auf irgendetwas uh, geistlich. The governments, right? Also die Regierung. Because it says in, in the prophecy in the book of Revelation that the sun, the moon and the stars represented the fall of the Roman government, right? Der Prophetie in der Offenbarung ist sagt, dass der Sturz der Sonne, Mond und Stern, das markiert der Sturz von der römischen Regierung. And Jericho, Jericho is just a symbol of this, this Babylonian system, right? Jericho is nur eine Darstellung dieser babylonischen System. So we know that the woman is going to get forgotten when this happens, right? And they're going to make this league, right? Also wir wissen, dass die Frau wird vergessen, wenn das geschieht, und die werden dieses Bündnis schließen. Because they, they will all be filled with fear. Weil right? sie alle mit Furcht erfüllt werden. So, I, I want us to see th th these things, that when Jericho gets brought down, it's marking the fall of the sun, the moon and the stars. Right? Also ich möchte, dass wir sehen, dass wenn Jericho herabkommt oder niederfällt, es markiert der, der Fall von Sonne, Mond und Stern. Okay, now go, go to the live stream. I've put a quote in there from Patriarchs and Prophets. Also gehen wir jetzt zu den live stream. Darin ist ein Zitat von Patriarchen und Propheten. It's in reference to this work uh, that Moses told them to do. Es ist in Bezug auf dieses Werk, die Mose das Volk gesagt habe, dass sie tun soll. Okay, in the first paragraph. Erster Absatz. It says, on the morning of the third day, as the eyes of all the people were turned towards the mount, its summit was covered with a thick cloud, which grew more black and dense, sweeping downward until the entire mountain was wrapped in darkness and awful mad mystery. Then, as a sound as of a trumpet was heard, summoning the people to meet with God, and Moses led them forth to the base of the mountain. From the thick darkness flashed vivid lightnings, with peals of thunder echoed and re-echoed among the surrounding heights. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. The glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on top of the mount. The what? Was sagt es? The glory of the Lord, right? Herrlichkeit des Herrn. It's marking his glory, right? Hier seine Herrlichkeit. So on August 11th, 1840, the whole earth was filled with the glory of the Lord, right? 11. August 1840, der ganze Erde wurde mit der Herrlichkeit des Herrn erfüllt. Okay, it says, um, lesen wir weiter. The glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mount in the sight of the assembled multitude. And the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder. So terrible were the tokens. What's he token? Was ist ein ja, Zeichen? It's a sign, right? It's a sign. Zeichen. Different word in English, but it means the same thing. So terrible were the signs of Jehovah's presence that the hosts of Israel shook with fear and fell upon their faces before the Lord. What are they doing? Was tun sie? So. What's Einer that marking for us? Also, was markiert das, wenn sie auf ihre Angesichter All haben? the prophets do what right here at this point? Alle Propheten tun was gerade hier an diesem Punkt? They all fall on their faces, flat and humbled in the dust, sie right? Alle fallen auf ihre Angesichter im Staub gedemütigt. Even Moses exclaimed, I exceedingly fear and quake, right? So it's going to be a very fearful event when the Lord brings this to pass, right? Es wird ein sehr furchtbare Ereignis sein, wenn der Herr das zustande bringt. And it's a, it's a sign so that God's people will believe the prophet that's raised up here forever, right? Und es ist ein Zeichen, dass Gottes Volk den Prophet, der der Herr hier aufstellt, für immer glauben werden. 
Because when the Lord brings this to pass, all the doubters and scoffers will be gone. They will be swept away. Right? But all those that believed, they will be filled with God's Spirit and they will be established. Okay, next paragraph. Next absence. And now the thunder ceased, the trumpet was no longer heard, the earth was what? The earth was what? Still. Still. Okay, so just so you get that point, go to Zechariah chapter 1. Get to Zechariah 1. So let's understand what it means when all the earth is still. We want to understand what it means when the whole earth is still. Zechariah 1. Verse 11. Verse 11. Zechariah 1, verse 11. Zechariah 1, verse 11. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth, and behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. So what does it mean when the earth is still? So what heißt es, when the earth is still? Is? Rest. It's the rest. So where are we? This is the Ruhe. So wo sind wir? Oder wie er Time of peace, right? This is the kleine Zeit des Friedens. So the, the point is that when he does this thing, it's the marking, the fulfillment of the prophecy in it. Mass, where the time of peace comes in, right? And when he does this thing, it is marked the fulfillment of the prophecy, and it is is where the awakening is marked, so the rule. Okay, and what what okay? What are the heathen going to do here? What do the heathen do? What will the heathen people do here? What do they make? What do they do? They make a covenant, right? It's a counterfeit, right? It's an official. But what's the Lord doing right here on Mount Sinai? But what's tut der Herr here on Sinai? He's making a covenant, right? A bondness. Okay, it's the it's the true covenant, right? The true bondness. It says, goes on to say. It says further. There was a period of solemn silence, and then the voice of God was heard speaking out of the thick darkness that enshrouded him. As he stood upon the mount, surrounded by a retinue of angels, the Lord made known his law. Moses, describing the scene, says, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of his saints. Okay, so just keep that thought in mind. He comes there to Mount Sinai with ten thousands of his saints, right? Moses says, "He comes to Sinai with ten thousands of his saints." From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Every one shall receive of thy words. Jehovah revealed himself. What did he do? Was tat er? So when when does Jehovah Jehovah reveal himself? Wann offenbart sich Jehovah? Come on, brothers and sisters, we've gone through this line upon line. Bring the stories together. When does God reveal himself? Wann offenbart sich der Herr sich selbst? The revelation of John. Yes, the revelation of John is one story, but the Offenbarung von Johannes. What does he have to do to reveal himself to us? Was muss er tun, um Okay, we must remove the veil from our eyes, right? The man from the road to Emmaus, the hand was removed, right? Right? And they saw the Lord face to face, right? And those two men on the road to Emmaus, when they saw Christ, what did they do? Auf der Emmausstraße, als sie Christus gesehen haben, was haben sie getan? They fell on their face. Sie sind auf ihrem Angesicht gefallen. Same illustration. Same right? Darstellung. Okay. So it says Jehovah revealed himself not alone in the awful majesty of the judge and lawgiver, but as the compassionate guardian of his people. So he's he's strengthening your faith right there. He's showing you that I'm here, this is what I can do, and I am your guardian. Also right? er stärkt deine Glaube hier an diese Stelle. Er sagt, hier bin ich, 
Das ist das, was ich tun kann, und ich bin dein Wächter. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. He whom they had already known as their guide and deliverer, who had brought them forth from Egypt, making a way for them through the sea, and overthrown Pharaoh and his host, who had thus shown himself to be above all the gods of Egypt. He it was that now spoke his law. So the Lord, right here, when he does this great thing, he's confirming his covenant with his people, right? So the Herr gerade hier, wenn er diese große Sache uh, tut, er bestätigt sein Bund mit seinem Volk. Now just go back to the book of Zechariah, chapter 6. So geht zurück zu Zechariah, Kapitel 6, jetzt. Because when um, Joshua, the high priest, when he goes through his trial, Denn wenn Joshua, der hohe Priester, durch seinen Test geht, let's see what the Lord says to him. Lasst uns sehen, was der Herr ihm sagt. Because Joshua, the high priest, going through his trial, is a type of Christ going to the cross, right? Denn Joshua, der hohe Priester, der durch seine Versuchung geht, ist eine Typus für Christus, der zum Kreuz geht. Oh, yes, right. Um, can you? Is it? You're the one who said that. Okay, yes. It says, um, verse 12. Verse 12. And speaketh them, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and he shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. And the crown shall be to Helam and to Tobijah and to Jediah and to Hen the son of Zephaniah for a memorial in the temple of the Lord. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. And this shall come to pass if ye will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. So... Right here, when he fulfills the covenant with the branch, so gerade right? hier, wenn er das Bündnis mit der Zweig erfüllt, and the branch is when he raises up Christ right here, right? Und der Zweig ist, wenn er Christus hier aufstellt. And it's always about if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. Es ist immer right? abhängig, ob du sorgsam den Stimme des Herrn, deinem Gott, gehorchst. And this is what the covenant was based upon in Mount Sinai, right? Und darauf war das Bundnis am Sinai basiert. All the promises were yours as long as you diligently obeyed the voice of the Lord thy God. All die Verheißungen waren dein, solange dass du sorgfältig die Stimme des Herrn gehorcht hattest. Right? Amen. And we've been through these stories many times. Okay. Okay. Um, so, go to um, Jude chapter 1. Got a few points just to make and then we'll close. Judas brief, Kapitel 1. Because remember, the Lord came with 10,000 of his saints to Mount Sinai. Denk dran, dass der Herr mit 10,000 seiner Heiligen zum Sinai kam. Now, yesterday, gestern, I paralleled a whole bunch of things, right? Habe ich viele Sachen parallel gestellt. It was parallel on August 11th, 1840 with the cross. The 11th August 1840 with das Kreuz. Which is October 22nd. Was auch 22. Oktober ist. Right. Which is also the baptism. Was auch die Taufe ist. And the baptism is the latter rain, right? Die Taufe ist auch der Spätregen. Right? Amen. <laughs> never looks so sure. Okay, so Jude 1 verse 14. So Judas 1 verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with what? The Herr kommt mit was? Ten thousand of his saints. Ten thousands von, tausende von seiner Heiligen. To 
execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So when he comes here, he's doing two things, right? So when er here ankommt, is er tut zweierlei. He's establishing one people, he's entering into covenant with them. Er etabliert ein Volk, er tritt im Bundnis mit sie. But the other, what else is he doing? Aber die andere Gruppe, was tut er noch? He's executing judgment upon all those that refused to believe and make the necessary preparation. Er führt Gericht aus über all diejenigen, die geweigert haben zu glauben und die notwendige Vorbereitungen äh, einzutreffen. Okay, let's, let's go back now. Go back to Joshua chapter 6. So, lasst uns zurück zu Joshua Kapitel 6 gehen. The last point I want to make. Der letzte Punkt, den ich machen möchte. So, we all, do we all see the comparison between the, the work of walking around Jericho and cleansing yourself, preparing for that long trumpet blast? Also, können wir alle den, den Gleichnis oder den Zusammenhang sehen von diesen sechs Tage um Jericho gehen und diese Vorbereitungswerk, die wir tun müssen, in Erwartung auf diesen langen Posaunensturz. Right? So both illustrations are pointing forward to this long trumpet blast. So right? Beide Darstellungen ähm, weisen auf diesen langen Posaunensturz hin. But look what it says you have to do prior to that point. Right? Aber schaut, was wir tun müssen noch vor diesem Punkt. Vers 10. Vers 10. Joshua 6, Vers 10. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I bid you shout, then shall he shout. When were they to shout? So, wann sollten sie ähm, schreien oder erschallen? No, go, go look, look at verse 5, it tells you. Vers 5 sagt uns. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horns, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. So, prior, prior to the long trumpet blast, what are you to do? Also, vor dem langen Posaunenstoß, was sollst du tun? You're not to shout. Du sollst nicht schreien. Right? Okay, so... And we'll show that the, the great shout is the loud cry, right? Wir werden zeigen, dass dieser große Schrei der laute Ruf ist. So, you've got not, you're not given any loud cry until that sign comes to pass, also right? Ihr werdet keinen lauten Ruf geben, bis dieses Zeichen eintrifft. Is there not allowed to speak when they are crying? Yes, so what are they? If you're not allowed to speak, what are you? Also, wenn du nicht sprechen, right. right. Public event. Yes, but so it's, was bist du? You're dumb, right? Du bist uh, stumm. Right? Amen. Okay, just go to Isaiah 53. Because we just said that Joshua, the high priest, prior to this point, he was... He was in a trial where Satan was accusing him, right? Wir haben gerade gesagt, dass Joshua... Did you say prior to this point? Yes, so where, vor diesem Punkt, dass Joshua in einem Versuchung war. Right? When Joshua is in that experience, what is that experience? So as Joshua in dieser Erfahrung ist, was ist das? It's yes, it, it, yes, in, it's, in some sense, yes, it's Gethsemane. But it's, the, it's the, like the Day of Atonement, when the high priest was in the temple uh, pleading for his people. Right? Also, wenn der hohe Priester im Tempel war und er fürbitte für sein Volk eintrat. Okay, Satan was accusing him. Satan hat ihm um, Vorwürfe gemacht. So, Isaiah 53, verse 6. Jesaja 53, Vers 6. It says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. When does the Lord lay Upon Christ, the iniquity of everybody. Wann legt der Herr um, die uh, Sünden von allen auf Christus? At the cross, right? Am Kreuz. But specifically at the beginning of the Day of Atonement, Aber right? ganz besonders am Anfang der Versöhnungstag. Right? Amen. 
the beginning of the Day of Atonement, they make the sacrifice, mm -hmm. and then the blood has to be taken in to atone for the people. Right? So, am Anfang des Versöhnungstags, die machen das Opfer und das Blut muss in das Heiligtum hineingebracht, um eine Versöhnung für das Volk zu machen. Verse 7. Vers 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. What did he not do? Was tat er nicht? He did not open his mouth. Sein Mund nicht aufgetan. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. And so the Bible tells you when you're not to open your mouth, it means that you're dumb. Right? Also the Bible says, when you don't open your mouth, then you're dumb. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. So we know that at this way mark, right, it's marking the point where you get delivered up, you go to prison, you get cut off, all the earthly support gets removed from you, right? Wir wissen, dass an dieser Wegmarke ist der Zeit, wo du ausgeliefert wirst, du gehst ins Gefängnis, um, alle irdische um, uh, Unterstützung wird entnommen. Right. So, go to Psalm 39. Geht zum Psalm 39. Und nearly done. Psalm 39, Vers 7. Psalm 39, Vers 7. It says, and now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. So what is what what does this sentence tell us? What's what's this person's mindset? So was um, is was sagt diesen Satz? Was ist der um, der Einstellung von diesem Schreiben? He has faith in me. He has faith in the promises, right? Er hat Glaube in die Verheißung. And he's patiently waiting for it, right? Und er wartet um, geduldig darauf. And verse 8, what's he, what's he doing in this time when he's patiently waiting for the promise? In Vers 8, was tut er in dieser Zeit, wo er geduldig auf die Verheißung wartet? He says, deliver me from all my transgressions, make me not the reproach of the foolish. What's he doing in this time period? So, was tut er in dieser Zeit? He's praying for deliverance, right? Er betet um uh, Erlösung. Who's afflicting him? Wer um, peinigt ihn? The foolish, die, die, uh, törichten. He says, I was dumb. I opened not my mouth because thou didst it. Right? So he, this person understands prophecy that in this time period he is dumb and he's not to open his mouth. Right? Person, der versteht der Prophetie, Prophezeiung. In dieser Zeit soll er seinen Mund nicht auftun. Okay. Go to Ezekiel 24. Hesekiel 24, verse 27. Now, in Ezekiel 24, it's speaking that the Lord tells Jeremiah that his wife is going to die. So, in Ezekiel 24, the Herr sagt Jeremias, dass seine Frau sterben wird. And at the very point that his wife died, Jeremiah was to open his mouth. Und gerade an dem Punkt, wo seine Frau stirbt, soll Jeremia seinen, Frau, seinen Mund auftun. Sorry? Äh, Ezekiel, sorry. Nicht Jeremia, Ezekiel. It's the same line upon line, right? Also, es ist dasselbe. Yes, you're right, right. right. it's Ezekiel, right? So, when Ezekiel's wife died, he was then commanded to open his mouth. So, let's read verse 27. So, wir lesen Vers 27. In that day, the day that his wife dies, Shall thy mouth be open to him, which is escaped, and thou shalt speak, and be no more dumb. And thou shalt be a sign unto them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. What was Ezekiel going to be to them? So was soll Ezekiel für sie werden? A sign. Ein Zeichen. And how was he going to be a sign? Und wie soll er ein Zeichen sein? When he speaks. Wenn er spricht. What was Jonah when he came out of the belly? Was war Jonas, als er aus dem Bauch herauskam? He was a sign, war right? Ein Zeichen. So the sign right here is when Ezekiel speaks. 
Also der Zeichen gerade hier ist, wenn Hesekiel spricht. When the Lord came down on Mount Sinai, what did he do? Wenn der Herr von Sinai herabkam, was tat er? He spoke, er right? Hat gesprochen. So we are, we have to see that it's marking this this glory here when God's people are filled with the spirit they're going to speak and they're going to be a sign. Ich markiert der Herrlichkeit hier wenn Gottes Volk wenn sie voll der Herrlichkeit sind sie werden sprechen es wird ein Zeichen sein. But prior to that point you are dumb. Aber noch vor dieser Zeit du bist dumm. You're not to speak. Du sollst stumm, danke. Du sollst nicht sprechen. Don't laugh. It's not, I don't mean it to be funny. Right? So, um, okay, um, go to, so the point is I want to see is what does it mean when Ezekiel's wife is dying and it was to be a sign to them. So, right? was heißt es, wenn Ezekiel's Frau stirbt und es soll ein Zeichen für sie sein? Galatians Okay, we, we don't have to go there. What does it tell you to do in Galatians chapter 4? So, was sagt es, was du tun sollst in Galata 4? You have to cast out the bondwoman. Du sollst right? den Knechtfrau auswerfen. What did Jeremiah no longer... What, what was, he was told not to mourn for his wife, right? Uh, Hesekiel is, wurde gesagt, er soll für seine speaking. Frau nicht um, weinen. Right? So what did Ezekiel, what was Ezekiel have to have no longer on his mind? So was sollte Hesekiel nicht länger in seinem Verstand haben? His wife. Seine Frau. Okay. What were they told to do in these three days preparation? Was sollten sie tun? Was wurde ihnen gesagt Sinai. Im, am Sinai in diese drei Tage der Vorbereitung, was sie tun sollten oder besser nicht tun? They were told not to come near their wives. Sie sollten nicht äh, in der Nähe ihrer Frauen kommen. Right? Amen. They were to get rid of the woman from their mind. Right? Den Frau von dem Verstand entfernen. Right? Amen. <laughs> It's like the natural demonstrates the spiritual. Also right? Das Natürliche weist auf das Geistliche. Now we'll see right here because in Matthew chapter 9 Denn wir werden sehen hier in Matthäus Kapitel 9 And we'll close with these thoughts. Und mit diesen Gedanken werden wir schließen. Matthew chapter 9, Vers 32 und 33. It says, As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. So what does it say the dumb man is? So was sagt es, dass dieser stumme Mann ist? Possessed with the devil. Uh, is possessing the I've Antoine. tried to explain this point that those evil propensities what does it mean? Also ich habe versucht diesen Punkt zu erklären, diese böse Neigung, Look, was heißt When this? you don't receive that oil that comes from heaven, what does it say? Also wenn du diese Öl nicht erhältst, die vom Himmel kommt, was sagt es? Satan, takes control. Satan has entire control over you. Satan hat der vollständige Kontrolle über dich. So the dumb, we are possessed with demons. So Stumm heißt, dass wir besessen sind mit Dämonen. Without that grace, Satan is constantly controlling you. So right? Ohne diese Gnade, Satan wird die vollständige und fortwährende Kontrolle über dich haben. It's only because of God's grace on the earth that all these people out there who know not Christ are not fully doing Satan's will. So es ist nur wegen der Gnade Gottes, dass all diesen Menschen auf der Erde, die Christus noch nicht kennen, um, nicht gänzlich der Wille Satans tun. And it says when he removes the Holy Spirit from the earth, everybody will be like Satan who has not accepted Christ. Und der Herr sagt, wenn er vollständig den Heiligen Geist von der Erde entfernt, dass jeder, den nicht Christus angenommen haben, werden wie Satan sein. Got to understand this point. We are controlled by demons unless we have the grace of God. Right? Wir müssen diesen Punkt verstehen, dass wir von Dämonen kontrolliert sind, es sei denn, dass wir die Gnade des Herrn haben. So it says here, and as they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with the devil, and when the devil 
was cast out. What was cast out? Vers 33. Was war hinausgeworfen? The bondwoman. Den Knecht oder den Magd. The dumb speak. And the multitudes marveled, saying, it was never to be seen in Israel. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. You see, brothers and sisters, when this, these false doctrines, which are the doctrines of devils, so, liebe right? Geschwister, diese falsche Lehren, was die Lehren von Teufeln sind, when they are taken away from our mind, we will have Christ dwelling in our presence. Not demons anymore. Die right? von unserem Verstand entfernt werden, dann werden wir Christus in uns haben und nicht Dämonen. So, if we don't obey God and receive of the daily manna, we are always going to do Satan's will. Also, right? wenn wir nicht Gott empfangen, wir nichts von diesen täglichen Manna nehmen, dann werden wir immer die Wille des Teufels tun. And that will manifest itself right before our eyes, brothers and sisters. Und das wird sich genau vor unseren Augen manifestieren. Amen. 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 Let's close with prayer. Let's just make the beach. Marius, do you want to yes, close? Dear Heavenly Father. Lieber himmlischer Vater. I am thankful for this beautiful day. Ich danke dir für diesen schönen Tag. Und auch für diese sehr wichtige Warnung. Herr, es ist wohl wahr, dass wir falsche Konzepte von dir haben. Bitte, dass du uns die Gnade gibst, dass wir verstehen werden und all diese falschen Konzepten hinauswerfen. Hilft uns, Vater, dass wir weise werden und dass wir gehorchen all das, was wir jetzt lernen. Und hilft uns, eine korrekte Verständnis der Bibel zu haben so dass wir unsere sündhaftigen Natur verstehen werden. Und hilft uns, diese falschen Theorien loszuwerden und dass wir auch unsere böse Neigung in Schach halten. Please bless us, uh, this day. Und bitte segne uns diesen Tag. Hilft uns das in unserem Verstand zu haben, was wir zu eben gelernt haben. In Jesu Namen. Amen.